What's going on, guys? It's been a long time. It's nephew, you know, nephew wins. <laughs> I had to change my name around because I'm doing something different. But we're gonna talk about that on a whole nother video. In this video, we want to talk about Hertz and the situation with the OTC, how it got delisted. Basically, where are we now? How am I trading this? Am I trading this? What am I doing? There's a lot of stuff going on right now. It's crazy, right? Today, the price just shot up 27%, 24%, whatever. It's up pretty high. I couldn't take profits because Charles Schwab had crashed, but then eventually it went back to working. So now I was able to finally take some profits. And I want to talk about what exactly is going on with the price of Hertz and exactly what should you expect at this time right now it has been delisted which means that it's no longer trading under the symbol HTZ it's not in the New York Stock Exchange anymore so now it's actually trading in the OTC which is the pink slips now I have made a lot of money in OTC dealing with companies that have been mismanaged or somehow they just end up filing bankrupt or they end up in some fraud situation they end up delisted and then the price is really low and then you buy it and then eventually the price either goes up or they work it out now they filed a chapter 11 and the chapter 11 is is a type of bankruptcy where in which they don't exactly go out of business but they try to you know fix the company and you know work out a plan to pay back the debtors at a certain time in the future then Hertz ended up getting a giant loan, which obviously no one would loan the money unless they knew that they were going to get their money back. So that's just one key right there. But I got this bearish article that I want to look at with you guys. Now, I know I'm always Mr. Bull, but I also want to check out the bearish article. Today, I took profits because there's supposed to be earnings coming soon, and I have no idea which way it's going to go. I'd rather jump back in if earnings is good and ride it up and miss out on the 10% or whatever it might be then for me to gamble and stay in for earnings and then watch my money just completely disappear or watch the price drop down 30 cent so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead over here and this say this is a older article well, not that old but November 6 is when they published it Hertz is now a pink sheet stock that is completely worthless now this company is being bashed of course just like Luckin was being bashed and obviously investor place this this blog right here are the most bearish <laughs> these guys are always just putting out so much foot like they're always constantly trying to beat a stock down I don't know if these guys are like bearish on purpose and then they just buy it up and then they get rich from beating down a stock and then buying it and riding it back up I have no idea but usually they just say so much negative stuff that it's not even funny. They almost have no positivity. And then there will be like 12 to 20 different publishers saying that thing. And then eventually one or two or three people will come and be bullish. And at some point, they did the exact same thing with Luckin, where they beat the price all the way down. Or at least they tried to, but it didn't go any further down. And then after so long, they started writing bullish articles. So it's just like, I can't stress enough that you should do your own research and you should figure out for yourself what's really going on not to trust these ridiculous blog articles because if you're making trading decisions based on this stuff <laughs> you're not doing enough research i mean at the end of the day you can get taken advantage of okay you don't want to miss out on an easy way to get a lot of money and you don't want to also you don't want to blindly follow and then lose all your money okay so remember i'm not a financial advisor it's just a youtuber telling you what i'm doing with my trade so it says right here, the previous symbol HTZ from the New York Stock Exchange is no longer valid, so whatever price you associate with that symbol is incorrect. Only the most speculative of gamblers would even think of buying this worthless stock. So they're calling it a worthless stock. It's not trading on the New York Stock Exchange anymore. They're saying basically don't buy it. Even though Hertz Global Holdings is in a Chapter 11 proceedings, no one should be under any delusion that Hertz stock has any value. Common stock shareholders will have nothing once the company emerges from Chapter 11 if it does at all. Then they give you a link to where you can go watch the case. I'll leave a link in the description where you can click on this so you can go check out the actual restructuring of the company. And sometimes companies do emerge from that. So it's not unheard of. They just want to make it seem as doom and gloom as possible. 
If they wanted to just give up, they would have just filed bankrupt and called it a day, if you ask me. They're trying to actually save the company. Um, none of them uh, have any indication that existing common stock shareholders will receive any value. So they're saying that they're still in hearings in the federal bankruptcy court in Delaware, and they're not saying that they're going to be giving any money away to any stockholders. So who knows? The third reason why they said this is because they recently lost his chief accounting officer, and that is not a good sign. Even though he was immediately replaced by a person within the company, this is also a red flag event. So usually when you lose your uh, chief accounting officer, usually that's, that's all bad. But in a situation where you guys are going bankrupt, you're going to be firing and restructuring, which re require getting rid of people who may have, may not have been doing their job to begin with. And that happened also in Luckin, where they had to slowly uh, replace all the people who probably was the culprit. Because nine times out of ten, if a stock company is publicly goes <clears throat> bankrupt or even tries to file bankrupt, usually it's because the management just screwed up big time. And so if the management screwed up big time in this situation, then you're going to have a lot of problems with, you're going to have a lot of problems with the, you know, restructuring because they need to get rid of the people who caused the company to fail in the first place. All right. So they're saying all this bad stuff. I just want to go over this. I'm not saying that any of this is right or wrong. I'm just giving you my opinion as to what I think when they say things, when they say things and then, you know, you, you, you read it and you perceive that as, oh no, they're right. Because right, you read this, you'll say, you know what, I'm just going to sell. Now, especially if you had Hertz at $5 or $6 or $8 or $20 or something like that, and it's all the way down to a dollar. And you're trying to decide, should you average down or if you should just sell out and call it a day? Reading articles like this will spook you into selling everything. And I've made that mistake so many times. Now... Obviously, I'm going to talk about risk management and ways to really profit from the situation. But so it says the way the day before the company delisted cancels all shares that hurt stock may be not not be at zero. There's always someone who's willing to try and push the stock up and pawn off the greater fool. So they're basically calling anybody a fool who buys this. <laughs> then they're basically saying the reason why the price might go up is because people might pump it up. Okay, so probably the best indication that Hertz stock is worthless is its bond prices. Hertz bonds now trade for 37 cents on the dollar to 39 cents on the dollar. There's a link to Morningstar's bond center site. I'm going to put that in the description so you guys can check that out. In fact, if you're thinking of investing in those bonds, keep in mind that they're risky as if everything else isn't risky. The point is if the bonds are, are trading so low, then the market believes that the Hertz stock is completely worthless. I'm going to also mention that uh, with, with Luckin, they had also had bonds and they were very low at a particular time. Eventually they went back up. People invest in bonds just like they do with stocks. So guys, I just want you guys to know that these bearish articles are meant to sway you into a direction. You have to ask yourself, why do they benefit from telling you this? Then they'll say at the bottom at the time, Mark Hake did not have either directly or indirectly any position in any of the securities mentioned in this article. Needless to say, he doesn't have any shares, so he's not benefiting. And that's exactly what they say, you know. And we have no idea if they do or not. They, they disclose that they don't, but who knows, right? So they're writing the article and they don't plan to benefit from it, is what they're basically saying, basically. Now, you'll never know exactly how they benefit from this stuff, but they may or may not. But my whole point is that they do have some points in there, the bond and the also the court hearings. So I'm going to put links to that so you guys can follow that. That type of stuff is factual, help you with your research. The rest of that stuff is opinionated, just like this video. So I have no idea what's really going to happen with Hertz. Uh, Hertz could go up, it could go down. Right now it's dropping, and I'm glad that I took profits. The reason why I took profits is because I bought a couple thousand shares of this last week when it was all the way down. I tried to get in as fast as I could. The price did go from 69 cent all the way up to basically a dollar forty something right now. So anybody who bought in at that low already made 100%. Now, at that point, you're going to have a lot of people taking profits. So if anybody bought a lot of shares, they're going to want to dump. And that's that's understandable. So I dumped. 
they dumped. I'm getting out. The reason why I get out is because anytime there's a significant increase in share price, I always sell. I always sell and then wait for the price to come back down. There's no need to chase and there's no need to expect anything other than that. Also, you have the earnings coming up. Earnings is coming, supposedly, right? I have no idea if earnings are really going to come or not. It's on the OTC. It can or it may or may not actually happen. If earnings do happen, though, it's a possibility that the value could be very low or high, right? So it could go down, it could go up. And I'm not willing to gamble how much I put in there for it to go down in such a short time period. So I took profits. As I'm watching right now, the price is actually dropping. As you see, when it first came in here, it's at 143. See where it's at now. Now it's at 134. So as I'm making this video, the price is actually dropping. Now, I actually took profits because it's part of my risk management. What happens is I basically invest in companies that are distraught, <laughs> they're in distress and are having a hard time. But at the same time, whenever they make a significant amount of profit, like 27%, I usually take profits and wait for it to normalize and come back down. Also, I lower my positions and I make sure that I'm only investing what I can afford to lose in the case in which I'm saying an amount in which I wouldn't be upset if I were to lose it. That is the basic way that I trade that. And I want to make sure that if it does go down, if I do lose the money, that I don't lose so much. Now, had I left my money in here, I would have already lost over a thousand dollars already. That's not money I was willing to lose today. So I took profits. I'm happy that I took my profits. I don't feel bad at all. And, you know, it is what it is. I'm not listening to the bulls who are saying, hey, hold on to it. It's going to keep going up. I'm not listening to the bears who are saying this thing is going to go down. It's going to tank, go out of business. At the end of the day, I'm just a trader. I'm making my own trades, it's swing trades. I made money from the trade. I pulled the money out. I'm going to wait till a better setup comes around. There's no rush. No rush at all. And if I miss out, I'll just find another trade. So, guys, I just hope you enjoyed this video. You know, let me know what you think is going to happen with this. I'm back to making videos again. I'm back, guys. I know you missed me. I missed you, too. Smash that like button. <laughs> this thing is steadily dropping while I'm talking. It's going down pretty fast. But smash that like button. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think about this company, if it's just over with, if it's a gamble. I Obviously, I'm going to take my profits and put it somewhere safe. At the same time, I don't mind holding on to a small percentage of shares in which if somehow Hertz eventually goes back up to $46, if it goes back up to this price up here, this isn't, that's not $46. This is $46. If it goes back up here, then I'm going to be a happy camper because I bought down here. But I don't want to buy so many shares that if this goes all the way down to 20 cent, then I'm crying. All right, guys. So anyway, hope you guys found this video informative. Like I said, let me know what you guys think. And I'm back to work, guys. I'm going to make another video explaining why I disappeared in the first place and what I've been doing. And also, we got a giveaway coming up. I'm going to let you know about that. We're going to talk about some Bitcoin and a lot of other things on this channel. So you guys stick around. Take care.